Hey guys, it's Michael Todd and welcome back to the Cult of Vintage. I have some disturbing news. I'm in a little bit of trouble. They found me. <laughs> um, so today we are at, we're in Lewisburg, Pennsylvania and we're really close to the camera. We get up close and personal here at the Cult of Vintage. Um, but we are in Lewisburg, Pennsylvania at the Silver Moon Antique Mall in Collectibles. Now you have seen clips of this before. However, I at the time was uncomfortable doing voiceovers. I've definitely gotten much more comfortable in doing them. So um, we're gonna get in here. I'm gonna give you a more in-depth view of it. And um, yeah, let's just go ahead, get in here, see if we can't find anything for resale or anything for a collection because God knows I might have a spare quarter inch left to shove something. Here is your exterior. Look at that car. Ooh. They found it, found them. There's your door and they are open daily from 10 to five. And this is part of a flea market. I don't wanna go over too far. Um, but there is a flea market that does occur here on Sundays. I thought this place was only open on Sundays, but I was wrong. Let's get inside. Okay, here we are inside. What I'm pointing out there is actually the entrance to the flea market that I was talking about that happens every Sunday. And again, I just simply did not realize person. <laughs> Don't focus on them um, that it happens. On Sunday, I thought this place was only open on Sundays. So the first booth that I wanted to check out was obviously this one. You can tell why. It's a beautiful setup. I've gotten some nice things out of here before. I did see this pink and black, this mid-century ceramic. I believe it's Hull. Set. The lovely black glass, salt and pepper shakers. A little too much for me. Um, I wouldn't necessarily say it's too much for a collector, but for resale, definitely. And I did see that radio. It reminded me of the radio that, you know, my grandmother had in the kitchen and she would play. So a beautiful little setup. I like these. I just, mm, I've only sold a few pieces of artwork. And while they were cute, definitely that, that like 60s, 70s vibe just wasn't special enough for me to pick up. And of course, the Sears and Roebuck Merry Mushrooms, ladies and gentlemen. And of course, if it's around, I try to find it. But first, <gasps> yep, in there, it was peeking. You always got to look in the cabinets, folks. You never know what's hiding. But whenever there's a piece of Viking glass, you know we're going to look at it. And of course, that is in the parsimon. Beautiful little, I'm going to call it a console bowl. And this beautiful chair. I love the color. I was kind of tempted by it. I'm not going to lie, but there was no price on it. And I'm like, am I just not seeing it? Is it on the back? No, it's that much. That's how much it is. The price doesn't even fit on the price tag. <laughs> <laughs> now we do enter into this booth and I did see some interesting pieces. Um, the first is like this art deco, like a powder or trinket dish. I kind of regret not getting this. It was only $12. Um, it was like that baked on, it's not flashed. I cannot for the life of me ever remember what that process is called. If you do know, please drop it down in the comments. Um, but it's fired on. It was in really good condition. There was some paint flecking to it, but nothing major. Of course, some blue opalescent. And then I did see this darker blue candy dish, Ellie Smith. It is priced at 22, so I did decide to go ahead and leave it there. Now I have actually had and sold one of these before. It is an opalescent creamer that is correct, but it is a Royal Bay Ruth. Now this is one of their later pieces and it is stamped. It is part of an entire line where they did these shells. Look at that detailed sculpt. It's They're absolutely beautiful. There's just nothing like a Royal Beirut sculpt. 
And then of course we do see the beveled, and I'm trying to make sure that none of the glass falls out on me, this beautiful beveled little jewelry box. Um, I believe it was priced mirrored. Hello. <laughs> It was priced at $18, which isn't bad. Um, if it was a little bit more ornate, I definitely would have been more likely to have picked it up. It was rather simple. Um, and not that there's anything wrong with that, because, I mean, hello, I do like clear glass, so can't get much more simpler than that. But I did decide to go ahead and leave it there. Again, we're really looking for those wow pieces. And then something wowed me was this opalescent juicer, or reamer, if you prefer. It was only $9, and I was shook. You guys, this was the piece. I don't know what it is, and we're about to make a jump, but not any jump. We're going to make it to the basket. That's right, we found the first item, so we could get a basket. Broken the curse, and it was only $9. I mean, heck yeah. And you did see this owl. You know, owls are very popular. This cut crystal. He was parked. He was parked. He was priced. We're going to park him back on the shelf. He was priced at 25 So I did leave it there. We have some Fenton. Some green opalescent. Again, I want it to be special. So it just wasn't special enough. And we're going to jump. Now, we do see some shelves here, and I do find, of course, the Scotch Cellophane Tape Tin. Now, I actually did not pick this up for resale. I actually picked it up for an art project that will be coming soon. I promise that it is an art project that you all see here shortly. But until then, we're going to jump. Uh. There were some interesting pieces in here, and the first piece that I picked up was actually this very Art Deco styled pottery piece. It is stamped. Now, the feel, the sculpt of it, the $4 price tag, definitely was like, take me home. Um, I actually had to check with none other than George the Antique Nomad, and he is familiar with this stamp. He has seen it before, but has not been able to identify it. He does believe it's 1920s, 1930s. We're getting up close and personal with the table um, because I do see this north wood. It is a custard glass satin. Now, it is missing its stopper. It was priced at just $3. Now, this would fluoresce or glow, as we like to say. Um... Yeah, it is molded. There was a mark on it, which I did believe would come off. I've actually sold two pieces of Northwood now. I'm kind of surprised I didn't pick it up because it was only $3. And I think the reason I didn't is because it was missing its stopper. But it is an antique piece, turn of the century, 19th century, pardon me. But I did leave it behind because it was just... Uh, some pink opalescent, some Hummels. I mean, where do we not go and not see Hummels, you know? Now look, here's the thing. I saw this. I knew I was going to film it. I am not the biggest Fiesta Wear fan. Um, I know people out there just absolutely love it or they're just like, oh, I could leave it. I'm in the later or the latter camp. Pardon me. Um, they did have these really cool, what I believe were candlesticks and a very art deco style. Now, had they not been so expensive and I had seen them like inexpensively i probably would pick them up because i do really like the sculpt but overall we're gonna jump i'm just not the biggest fan i'm just being honest but i did want to show up because it was it was quite an impressive display and this is definitely set up for the fourth of july um the red white and blue you know now, these are priced at $11.50. Here's the thing that threw me. They are unmarked. I do believe that these are reproduction pieces. Um, the aluminum on them, like, I mean, you can see it. it was so shiny. And not to say that, you know, they couldn't be genuine and somebody just never used them. Um, but the weight, the feel, that bottom, no markings, the quality, or I should say the pristine condition of the aluminum really had me thinking that they were uh, reproductions. And of course, the strawberry jam jar. I mean, where do we not see that? And they do have some display cases here. Um, the first thing that I do see is... Look at that little poodle with the green rhinestone eyes. I kind of regret not getting them. 
That was a stupid move, Michael. I think they were priced at just $10 too, which I know is even more foolish. But, you know, you can't buy everything. I mean, you can, but then, you know, you'd be living in chaos and I just can't deal. No, no, I can't. I do see this little perfume bottle at $12. It looked to be semi-new to me, so I really wasn't all that interested in getting it out. Um, they're really cute. That mint and that powder, that Tiffany blue set, salt and pepper shakers, those were adorable. But again, it just wasn't speaking to me. It wasn't saying take me home. Now, I have been to this place multiple times. And again, like I say in the introduction, I just wasn't comfortable doing the voiceovers. So I did know that I wanted to show, look at that beautiful Art Deco lamp. Um, it, was a little, it was a little pricey, I'm not going to lie to you. Um, and then I have seen this lamp before and it absolutely breaks my heart. It should not be blue. Somebody painted it blue. It is a JB Hirsch lamp. It is priced at $50, which, um, uh, it, it breaks my heart. Yes, there, they have an eBay picture and it is listed at one thirty. Now here's the problem with it. That $130 is a totally reasonable price if somebody did not spray paint the lamp blue. <laughs> Just like, okay, I'm getting a deal here. Now we did see this, um, oh goodness, it's a state. Is it Indiana, Indi Indianapolis? Indiana Glass, Tennessee Glass Company. It's like a state. Um, it is marked there. It is a canteen, so it is a glass canteen. Um, the price was good, especially for a collector, but it was pretty close to what they would resell, about $20. So I did leave it behind. We're leaving a lot of stuff behind, I know, and everybody's out there just screaming, why, why? <laughs> Because I don't want to live in a horde. That's why. <sighs> so we're in another part of the mall. This place is actually really big. I, I mean, looks are deceiving. From the exterior, it doesn't look all that big, but it is. It kind of, it like, it's one of those buildings that goes back farther than it goes left to right. And we do see this pretty little hand-painted basket. In the aqua glass, $25, not where I would want it to be. Some pretty Vaseline glass, some carnival glass, some hand-painted milk glass. We've got all of the glass here, folks. All the glass here. Well, no, not all of it. Just like a tiny, minuscule, little fraction portion. <laughs> now, I do spy on the other side of this little wooden column. I was, I was going to attempt to reach through there, and I said, don't do that. No, Michael, don't. It was this interesting piece of pottery. Um, it, it is a little crude, but that is why I liked it. And then I flipped it over, and it does seem like it is, I don't want to call it a hobbyist piece, but maybe more of a novice piece, which there's no shade to that because I probably couldn't do any better. Um, but, you know. I didn't know how, how desirable, while I do see the artistic value in it, I don't know how much other people <laughs> would see the artistic value in it. Now we do see this little headlamp here, and she does have some damage to her eyelash. You can really see it there on the top here. I think I'm going to, yeah, I am going to point it out. I mean, I guess she just didn't put on, she only, she only has one side of her false falsies on. She didn't, she didn't get around to the other side yet, y'all. That's all. And she's priced at $15, which is reasonable. Um, is she, she does have her earrings. She does seem to be missing her necklace. Um, but with the eyelash damage, I decided to go ahead and leave her. And I am giving you a quick shot of these signs. It was a pretty cool looking display, but a lot of the signs, you know, they were new. And we don't do the new here at the Cult of Vintage, folks. No, no. But that's not to say that you can't, you know, add those in as filler pieces. There's a lot of little smalls. I love a small. I just, I love looking in the small cabinets. It's so visually appealing. Oh, and there's a little kittle. What was that, like 1968? I think this is like a jewelry locket. And the little doll came inside. Very collectible. 
great resale value. And I do see this like a 1950s snowman. He is pristine, which made me again feel like he was a reproduction. Uh, that again, ooh, look at that. Look at that face. Ooh, how would you like that staring at you in the middle of the night? <laughs> Lord, no, no, thank you. I'm not putting my cookies in you. Mm -mm. My cookies are going nowhere near you, Jar. Now, I do see this burrow, I guess. I think she is missing a baby. She's chained. It is a Japan piece. Um, It's rather... Oh, Michael, calm down. <laughs> um... It's relatively, I think they only had it priced at $10, which is very reasonable. I think that there definitely was room um, for resale on the piece, but I just, oh, it's priced at 12. Oh, it's priced at 12 50. Well, 50, 12 50. What's up with these 50 cents around here, folks? And then I do see the Holt Howard and you can tell, look at the eyes. It's the Holt Howard. You can just tell by the eyes, right? They were only $15. That was stupid. That was a stupid, stupid move on my end. Um, then you have these little anthropomorphic little spaniels. I've actually had and sold these before. $8.50, there was definitely room. But again, because I've I've sold them before, I didn't really, I wasn't super interested in, in reselling it. Now, if you know me or you don't know me, I do enjoy a Kewpie. Um, and I really like when they're like the, um, oh goodness, like the display pieces. Unfortunately, this was a newer one. I think it was like 1988 and I prefer the vintage or antique Cupies. So I did leave it behind or like the Goebbels or I know that there's like the Sabino art glass, like they have the display, like the company names and then they make it. I just, I don't know why, but I really enjoy those pieces. Like nameplates. That's what I was looking for. So again, we're just kind of checking it all out here. What do you see, Michael? What is it? It was very narrow. Very narrow. Oh, we see the toucan creamer. And green with a red and, and black BDI. $15. Again, really fair for a collector, but it's it's cutting it close. I think that you know you would be lucky to get oh look at this poor quail. $25. Doesn't that isn't that morbid? Like what? <laughs> I don't want to eat my cheese out of the back of a quail. Like, ooh. It's a bit violent. Beautiful art deco vase. 35. Oh, but the, um, oh, what were we looking at? I'm going to have to go back and look. Hold on. It was the toucan, the toucan. He was a little too close. I think you'd be lucky to get 2025 for it. Now I did see this figurine. I thought she was a mermaid. No, she's not. It's just a little girl on a rock staring at a fish into the sea. Be careful, little girl. It's not safe to play by the sea like that. You look very young. Danger. And what do we see? This cute little Scotty dog. I thought for sure he was going to be a planter or a bank. And uh, no, he's just a little figurine. Look at those little worried eyes of his. Adorable. Oh. Wade whimsies and those are only a dollar each I've done very well with selling lots of Wade whimsies um I don't know that I would really want to pick them up necessarily for a dollar each now I do see these little like French bulldogs I think or pugs I don't know this is a German piece and I knew that for sure because I actually own one of these, and this one was priced at $10. I think that I got mine for a little less, but I do think that I do have some damage on the back or the front of mine around the grass part, but I love it. It's um, got that 22 carat 
fancy. Gold detailing to it. We do see a little pixie planter. It's priced at $12.50. I think that that's fair. And I know a lot of you are going to be like, I can't believe you just didn't get that. Like, Michael, who are you? I don't know. Today I was not myself, apparently. <laughs> I don't know what else to tell you. <laughs> Now this display was really cool and they had something I've never seen before and it was in pristine condition. Look at this lovely leaping deer. It is a TV lamp. Love that. Ooh, mm -hmm. but they're missing the pink elephant. Yes, they are. These are Libby glasses. It's the carousel set. But again, there is a pink elephant. And the pink elephant is the one that is most desirable. Because, you know, pink elephant, of course. And here we've got some of the birds, salt and pepper shakers. You know, not all of these are Japan. I found out because I actually had a good bit of these. And a lot of them were actually German. And we have some McCoy down there. Now we do see like this, they have it labeled as like a counter jar or a candy jar. Um, again, it is that fired on paint. I thought it was really cool. Um, this I thought would be really awesome in like a Halloween display. It is an orange. Obviously the bottom is clear because again, the paint is fired on. Did you see it? Did you spot it? Oh, it's in the background. You can kind of see it. So I did leave it there because again, it just wasn't, um, it wasn't saying take me home. Now I spy it. Look at this. It's the complete Mary Mushroom Spice Rack, y'all. And they wanted $160 for it, which, you know what, is fair collector value. It really truly is. I know that may seem exorbitant, but if you collect the Mary Mushroom, then you know getting all of those spice jars in the rack can be quite pricey. So here we are in another booth area. <laughs> We've got some little paperweights and I'm checking it out and I see a Christmas angel. I see it at $14.99. It does not appear to be a Lefton. So I'm like, mm, nah. Truth be told, that would probably have gone into my personal collection. I'm not going to lie. And this Santa, look, blue-eyed, winking Santa spaghetti. He is a bank. These go for about $50.55. I think they had theirs priced at... 35 if I'm remembering correctly. Oh, Michael, you missed that spotted. What is that pig? Do you see that picture back there? Oh, darn it. I didn't even see it in real life. I'm not even going to lie. Kind of would have liked to have offered that up. And then I've actually seen several of these that seems to be a series of animals. I actually, um, I've seen an elephant, a pig, a bear. But again, very art deco, the color scheme, the sculpt of it, it screams that 1920s, 1930s era. I do not know the manufacturer. And then I found a pig creamer, like a little personal creamer. Who are you? Well, don't know. That was great camera work there, Michael. Really good. Elephant creamer pitcher. <laughs> Well, yes, it is. Oh, boy. And yes, we are recording again by the window at night. So I'm sure you can hear the crickets. We're going to check it all out, folks. Checking it all out. Mm, there was a bunch of figurines, but and I'm a sucker for figurines, but those were all like, eh. They were just so-so. We do have a cute little kitchen display here. Oh, that little strawberry colander, that one's cute. You missed that. Very feminine, very dainty. I do see this pie bird in a pastel pink and blue. We did have a little bit of damage on it, but I was, you know, 
nothing terrible. I think it would still function. And it was priced at $15. That was definitely more than I was willing to spend. And again, that piece would have, well, you know what? Now that I think about it, it could have, because of the color scheme, gone up to about 30. So you could have doubled your money on that. And we do see this pretty blue opalescent, the little butter dish. Ooh, she's sparkly. She's 29. Now it was 40% off in this booth. Um, but again, I just wasn't comfortable spending that because it's a very specific item. It's not really, you know, a butter dish isn't really something that you can turn into something else or use it in a different kind of way. So you would really have to be a fan of blue opalescent glass and really appreciate it for what it is. Um, so I did leave it behind. Now we did see... <laughs> Oh, it's trashy. Oh, yes, it is. It is trash-tastical. It's this teal with a gold giraffe and that... Oh, god-awful, ugly lampshade. But how can you not? <laughs> Red with the teal and gold, of course. And then we do spot some Van Briggle down here. Um, you know, it was priced at, I think, 59 and with 50, 40 percent off i think that was an incredibly reasonable deal the thing with it is is that it's a very common sculpt um the glaze is very common so far as van briggle so if it would have been maybe in one of the green glazes i might have been more tempted if it was a more unique sculpt i might have been more tempted but chances are the vendor probably would have been asking more money so it's just one of those situations where you really got to you know, think about, well, is this unique enough that it would really command a higher value? It wasn't. And then I do spot this three piece, oh goodness, bedroom set. This is like a gentleman's wardrobe. So you do have like an armoire set here on the side where you could hang like your suits or your dresses. You know, we don't, we don't judge here. I... <laughs> You can put your shoes down here. You can put skeletons, you know, all of your secrets, whatever. But look at this beautiful waterfall vanity. And it's $300. It was $100 a piece. Uh, that's shameful. Now, I do have um, a, uh, like an Art Deco style dresser or bureau if you will and it does have the round mirror but I love the fact that all three of these pieces coordinated and then I was going to focus on this foam but then I got distracted and I thought that I would show you all this beautiful t-shirt that I'm wearing and it says vintage rescue squad what hey squad hey <laughs> well guys I got three things I got this gorgeous Art Deco vase, an amazing Scotch cellophane, cellophane tape that I'm going to use in an art project, and this gorgeous opalescent reamer, or juicer as I prefer to call it. Okay, don't break it. Don't break it. And then I see it. There's a chip. And I'm weighing, do I want it? Oh, it's chipped. You all know how I feel about chipped or broken glass. It's freaking me out. And then I'm like, how much is it? It's $9. Do I want it? It's broken. Ah, uh, what do I do? What do I do? What do I do? It's that's literally my brain. Uh, it's not super sharp. Mm. You know what? I'm going to spare you all. Look at this. This is really long. Jeez, Michael, you you really are indecisive. <laughs> I say bad, bad. No, no. Well, guys, we're going to wrap it up here in the car. See you in a second. Well, that was it at the Lewisburg Antique and Collectibles Mall. You know, sometimes I wonder how I can remember my own name. <laughs> we only got two things. I did end up putting back, as you saw in the voiceover, I did end up putting back the, I'm very sad about it, the opalescent reamer get your mind out of the gutter um there was a pretty substantial crack or chip in it i should say it was smooth and at nine dollars it was 
This is the cheapest I've ever found one of those. I don't know what it is, but I really want to buy an opalescent creamer for resale for some reason. I know that's weird, but you know what? I'm a weird kind of guy. Keeping it consistent. So I hope you guys enjoyed the shop along, the tour. I would recommend coming down. Um, you know, there were definitely some really good prices in there. Uh, thrift store prices even, but just some of the stuff. I, I'm i really trying to bring the A game to the reselling business. So there are a lot of things that I could, did leave behind just simply for that sake. There were very collector friendly prices in there too. That beautiful Murano cranberry, the Bulacante with the controlled bubble. That beautiful piece of art glass. I love the color. I was a little uncomfortable at spending 30 for that particular piece. If it were, if it had different colors to it, I probably would have snatched it up. So yeah. But again, I hope you enjoyed yourself. And um, until next time, guys, remember, keep it rusty, crusty, and dusty. Bye, guys.